What's up everyone, I'm Orion with Impossible Game Labs, and today I want to bring to you something pretty cool, which is a print and play playthrough of Arcworld. Attached in the link below or on the Kickstarter page is a uh, link to a package that you can download in order to get two sheets that you're going to print out and you can use to follow along with this guided tutorial. Uh, you can print on whatever you want, whether you have cardstock or just plain paper. In this case, I use heavy cardstock and my cards come out looking something like this. This will just make it a little bit easier to film uh, since they're a little bit heavier uh, stock. In addition to your cards and the tokens that you printed out, you're going to want to grab one regular six-sided dice, one token of some type to represent damage, and another token of a different type to represent mana. Uh, you can just grab these from another game, use pennies, quarters, whatever, slips of paper, anything should be fine. To start with the setup, you're first going to want to take any hunt card, which you can identify by the red border and the gold cost, gather them into a deck, shuffle that up, and place that at the head of the table between you and your opponent. You then want to set up your tower card. Your tower card is going to be your life points. You're going to take one cube, usually a mana token, and place each health point above the three towers that you start with. In a real game of Arc World, you would have eight towers to work with, but for this little demo situation, we're going to start with just three. Once that third token is removed, you are dead. Yeah, I guess that's just life sometimes. You notice that your tower card also gives you places to put various things and a guide to all the phases in the round. When you start the game, the only thing that you have next to your tower card is your deck. Normally in your deck, you would have various minions and ultimates that you have uh, selected at the beginning of the game. In this case, just take the captain ultimate and place it face down in the deck area. You have a deck of one card. We'll be using the hunt and eliminated areas later in the game. For now, we'll just move this off camera, off to the side. You should have a similar setup in front of you. Finally, take your minion, your hunter hero, your captain hero, your damage hero, and your blocker hero into your hand, and this forms your starting hand. In a real game of Arc World, you'll have slightly different cards and slightly more heroes, but again, this is just to get the basics of the concepts down. And that concludes setup. We're now ready to move into the hunt phase. First, we're going to resolve the hunt phase. Since you'll be going first, I'm going to have the first hunt action. When hunting, you're going to play a number of cards with coins on them in order to use the coin value to purchase in the hunt area. I have two options here. I can either play a hunter hero with three coins, or I can play three regular heroes with one coin each. I'd much rather give up one hero for one card as opposed to three heroes for one card. So in this case, I'm going to play my hunter, take this hunt card in front of me, and then move my hunter under my tower card into the hunt area. Normally, you would wait until after the hunt phase to move all of your hunt cards into your hand. So now it would be your turn to hunt. I want you to find your hunter hero, play it out in front of you, and then take one of these hunt cards in front of you. Now move your hunter hero below your tower card into the hunt area. It now comes back to me. I now have the option of playing any number of cards to purchase this other hunt card. As we saw before, it would take three of my cards in order to purchase this one card, so I don't think I'm going to do that. Likewise, since you have the same cards as I do, you should probably pass as well. Since we both pass, the hunt phase is over. This last card is discarded and returned to the hunt card deck, and we take our hunt cards that we purchased and add them to our hand. At the moment, we should both have the same hand, which consists of three heroes, a hunt card, and one minion card. We're now going to select a number of these cards to place face down into a line. This is called the positioning phase. Normally, when you're playing Arc World, during the positioning phase, you can place up to five characters in front of you. In this instance, we're going to place four. I'm going to make my decisions in secret and then place my cards down in front of me as so. You should play the captain, your damage hero, your minion, and your blocker. 
And now we will reveal simultaneously. Once this happens, we're going to resolve any passive abilities that have an on reveal effect. You have two on your side. This on reveal is just reminder text letting you know that this character has one armor on them. A unit with an armor value will receive one armor token for each point of value when revealed. Each armor token on a unit will prevent one damage on that unit, and then the armor token will be discarded. This armor token goes on your blacker. Now, your captain will provide plus two dominance to one of your heroes. You'll note on this token that dominance cannot be given to minions. We'll instead give this plus two dominance to our damage hero. My setup is very similar to yours, but I just did things a little bit differently. I'm going to take my armor here, and I'm going to do something a little bit different from you in that I'm going to take my plus two dominance bonus and place it on my blocker as well. When there are ability buffs like this plus two dominance, there's no limit to the number of tokens that you can put onto one unit. So in this particular case, I just want to have a really buff blocker. And we're now ready to move into the play phase. So in this scenario, you have the first action. On the very first turn, the first player only takes one action, and then on every subsequent turn, each player will take two actions each. The player will proceed until both players have passed consecutively, or one player has conceded the round. When you concede the round, you'll do neither tower damage nor win dominant, but if you're losing really badly and just need to stem the bleeding a little, conceding might be the right option. Right now, conceding would be a terrible play, so instead, what you're going to do is attack. In order to attack, you're going to take your hero and rotate them 45 degrees. That hero is going to deal damage equal to their attack damage value. Since there is a sword on this hero, the hero must target one of the two outer flanks of my line. In this case, you're going to target my blocker hero. Now we're going to roll for crit. In this case, we're going to roll one die and try to get it equal to or less than this crit value here. And if we do, we're going to deal an additional damage. I'll be rolling the die because, you know, make sure that you don't cheat. Oh look, you did it. So you're now going to be dealing four damage to my blocker hero. In addition to the four damage that you're dealing here, you also have a passive ability. This ability says that when you attack, you deal one damage to an enemy minion. Hunt cards count as minions, so you'll be dealing one damage to my hunt card as well. That is a whopping four damage that comes to my blocker. Luckily, this armor blocks the first one, but the remaining three get through. Your damage character did one damage to my hunt character. Cool. Good turn. Because nobody's critically wounded, I'm going to go on the attack. I have two units here with ranged damage. On your turn, you use melee damage, which could only target the two flanks of my attack line. Ranged damage, however, can target any unit on your attack line. So I'll start by using my hunt card, which is a type minion, and I'll deal one damage to your minion card. Place one damage token on your minion now. And then I'll take my captain and I'll also target your minion for two more damage. Like before, I'm going to roll for crit and attempt to get a third damage. I mean, that's almost like a two, right? Anyway, two will have to be enough. So take two damage and add it to your minion card. And that is my two actions. Don't worry, you're down, but you're not out yet. There are two problems here. One is that this minion is wounded and therefore going to die at the end of your turn. And two is that a wounded unit cannot attack. So even if you wanted to engage this unit to do its attack damage, you wouldn't be able to. Let's see if we can resolve both of those problems. We're going to do that by using an ability. Earlier, we used passive abilities, but this time we're going to use an active ability. An active ability both takes one of your two actions and requires mana to use. We started the game with two mana, so we're going to spend one of those mana on this ability, which allows our blocker to guard. Guarding is an ability which allows you to take damage from an adjacent unit and move it onto the blocking hero. This hero has an armor which nullifies the first point of damage that goes into this hero. So now your minion is no longer wounded, which means that you can now attack with it. We're going to engage this minion and set up to do two damage. This minion has no crit value 
and therefore only deals 2 damage. We're going to put that 2 damage onto my damage hero. As cards become exhausted from battle or wounded, you can start ignoring them as flank cards. This means that the damage from your minion can come all the way through my right flank and hit my damage hero. By doing this, we'll prevent my damage hero from being able to attack on my turn. The tables have turned. Okay, I'll admit, that was a pretty good turn. But just like you can use guard, so can I. I'm going to activate my guard here and move one damage over onto my blocker. This means at the end of my turn, my blocker will be sacrificed, but it will allow me to use my damage hero. So I'm going to take my damage hero for three, and I'm going to target your captain. That's going to be three damage on your captain and a grit, which I got. In addition, my passive allows me to do one damage back to your minion, putting him back in jeopardy. Basically, it's coming around full circle. Place four damage onto your captain hero and one damage onto your minion. Meanwhile, I'll take my blocker hero and place them in the eliminated area next to my tower card. This will allow you to gain one mana and draw the top card of your deck. Please do that now. Oh look, it's an ultimate card. It's almost like the deck was stacked in your favor. Let's see how we can use the ultimate to get you out of this situation. You're in a little bit of a bind because your captain is about to be eliminated. Your blocker is all the way on the other side of the line and therefore is not adjacent to your captain. And further, an ability, once it's been used, cannot be used again. Your captain, because he's wounded and has four full damage to their four health, cannot engage to attack, and it looks like you're running out of options. Except, heroes can use abilities while they're wounded. Think of it as using your ability as you take your last breath. In this case, you're going to use an ultimate ability. An ultimate ability acts like an ability just like it was on a hero, except it's a card that you play from your hand. So in this case, you're going to play your ultimate card from your hand, paying two mana, which lets you take a target minion and heal all damage on that minion. Well, that changed quickly. This card is now going to go to the bottom of your deck, which is basically the same thing as the top of your deck at this point, but who's counting? Finally, you're going to attack with your blocker and do the last point of damage to my minion character. And for that, we're going to roll crit. In this case, a 3 is above a 2, so you do not get crit damage. Lucky for you, 1 is all it would take. At the end of your turn, your captain is eliminated. The hero is placed next to your deck in the eliminated area, and I will gain 1 mana and draw the top card from my deck. So, this seems to be a pretty sad state of affairs. So what's going to happen here is that uh, I no longer have anything that can prevent the damage to my minion. It's true, I was able to draw my ultimate card, and I do have enough mana. However, my captain hero is exhausted, which means I cannot use that captain hero's ability after they've been exhausted. So for now, my hunt minion will be eliminated. Minions that are eliminated do not go to the eliminated space on your card. Instead, they're placed on the bottom of your deck. And now, I have no further actions because everything is essentially engaged and nothing is ready, so I will pass. On your turn, you'll find that everything on your side is also engaged, and there are no further actions that you'll take, so you will also pass. Since we passed consecutively two times in a row, we will now move to the resolution phase. We'll start the resolution phase by looking at the dominance as shown on all of our heroes. In my case, I have 10 dominance, and you appear to have 9 dominance. The player who has the highest dominance will be allowed to draw one card, and will deal their tower damage first. In this case, I actually don't have any tower damage that I can deal, because you took out my minion. So now, play passes on to you. You will deal your tower damage, dealing one point of damage to me. Finally, we'll remove any tokens lying about, discard any mana that would be found on any heroes, and take any surviving cards back into our hand. In addition to picking up any cards on the table, return any cards from the hunt area 
back into your hand. If we were playing a full game, you would draw a card from your deck, and you can move directly into the respawn phase, which is where you would take a character who is in the eliminated area and move them down to your respawn area. Respawn characters come back to your hand at the same time any hunt characters did. And that's the basics of how you would play a round of Arc Wolves. If you want to continue playing, you could try playing uh, one versus one by yourself and see if you would make different choices, uh, how things would come out differently. Uh, or maybe you would get better or worse dice rolls than I did and see how that affects the game as well. Another thing that you can do is print another copy of the hero sheet and play versus with a friend to see if you can get the idea of the game down. Again, in this version, we're only going to three health. So the first person to do three tower damage to their opponent wins the game. And that about does it for our interactive playthrough of how to play Arc Worlds. Uh, if this seems like your type of game, then awesome. We would love to have you join the campaign. So just look at the Kickstarter page for ways that you can help support this project. And uh, yeah, leave comments down below. Uh, anything that you'd like to see further in terms of like how to learn the game and uh, let me know about that as well in the comments below. Uh, until next time, it's been Orion with Unpossible Game Labs. Peace.